Uh, sorry, we are headed to the schoolyard, and this is a, a Celestron StarSense 114 millimeter AZ. As you can see, I can carry it all with one hand, or this way, might be, you might see it. So, I want to test it. I tested this guy about 15 minutes uh, with its app type of thing, and it's kind of promising. It wasn't dead on accurate, but I want to go to the as you know from my backyard, I don't have the greatest uh, angle view. So I wanna take it just to, you know, half a block to the park uh, where I got just a 360 view. There is a lot of street lights as you can see, or school uh, lights back there, but it's okay. It's still, when we go deep in the park, in the schoolyard, it's actually, as you can see, starting to get dark as we're getting further away from the uh, building of the school. Um, it has a nice, uh, yeah, pretty much 360 view. So I want to test this guy. And I have Angelus, as you saw behind me somewhere. She's on the phone. But I want to put this through his paces and see if this is actually good. Uh, my first experience, even though it was like 10 or 15 minutes, um, was kind of promising. And if it is, it does what it's supposed to do. I may even change my mind on if the star sense is going to be a game changer or not. So, um, for all you guys, so if you get this type of telescope, as you can see, I can carry it with one hand all the way here. There's really no trouble. So, there we go. There's Angelus on the phone. So, I just got it set up. It took literally 10 seconds. That should be okay height. We're in a field that's pretty... Looks pretty good. That's our Taurus right there. I do believe I see Scorpio over there. Uh, I mean, remember, this is the city, so you're not going to see uh, a whole bunch. There's Altar and then Vegas up there. And then there we go. So, anyway, let's put it through its paces as soon as uh, Angelus is done. Okay, right now I'm just trying to align the telescope. I don't know. Hold on. Let me turn it off. Back on. needs alignment okay so let's do that first now the first time you do this you might be you need to do like a two minute alignment I don't know if that's a hundred percent over the mirror so what you do this is very similar to the uh, cell phone adapter so the first thing is you put you're gonna have a two minute uh, alignment procedure mine I put since I moved I put still needs alignment so you center uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, your cell phone cameras over the mirror. Center it over the mirrors. And okay, so now what you have to do, find something specific like a light pole, a telephone pole, and um, in the eyepiece, lock it down so it's in centered. Uh, just moved, so I gotta look okay, it's centered. Then what you do here is I'm on that light, so you move like that so I'm, I'm on which light am I on that light yeah e yes we're on that light so then you just move this there done and it's ready to locate stuff okay let's try the wild duck cluster so then what you do it's, it should be right there now let me lock it hold on it's not focusing let me take close the light. We're going to go try Saturn because then we'll be able to tell. So let's go like, where are you? Saturn. Did you see that? So I punched in Saturn and now I have to go and it says Saturn should be right there. So let me lock it down. Okay, no. So Saturn should be there. See, it's green. Yeah. So it should be there. Right. If it's right, it should be. Oh, okay. Now, Saturn is on the eyepiece, but I have a 32 millimeter eyepiece and it's right on the edge. Now, I'm gonna put it in the middle and then we're gonna see how far we're actually off from the, the um, so this is like in the middle. You can see it's saying Saturn is right there, but I'm a little bit just to the left, a little bit. So take a look, babe, tell me what you think. Yeah. Okay, do you see it in the eyepiece? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. It's tiny. it's very tiny because we have a 32 millimeter eyepiece. So guys, take into consideration that if you have like a 25 millimeter eyepiece, I wouldn't have seen Saturn. It would have been out of the field of view instead of just on the edge. So um, let's try some. Let's let's blow it up. Okay, babe. We put a I believe a 12 and a half power eyepiece. Is it still there? And you could definitely tell that it's Saturn? Yes, I see it. Okay, so Saturn is blow up. It's a little bit fuzzy. The reason is because this is a Burge Jones design, which means it's a reflecting telescope with a thousand millimeter focal length, and which means it has that Barlow in the focuser. Okay, so which means it's not the best quality. It doesn't really need it. Okay, everybody, so that was a 9.7 uh, millimeter. Uh, Mead Super Palazzo. So that gave us 103 power. Uh, you can see Saturn in its ring, but it wasn't crystal clear because this no. is not. This in is. The beginning it was a little more clear when it was smaller. Yeah. So as you can see, now we're going to get off that. Let's try the Lagoon Nebula. So it's saying. So as you get closer, it gets. The, the circle gets bigger, and it should be right there. It didn't turn green, why? Okay, let's see if it's there. Now, the Lagoon Nebula is the second brightest nebula after the Orion Nebula, but this, I do see a cluster. Now, it does have, uh, Lagoon Nebula does have a cluster in it. So this could be it, but the telescope is too small to see the nebula. I don't think... Okay, let's try M25. So again, it's... See, I'm on target. Do I have to do it again? See, it's not turning... Maybe it takes a minute to... Okay, turn the green. Okay, so maybe it takes a minute. And again, I do see a couple stars on the side. This could be a star cluster, but it's a very... Yeah, see, we got to be a little bit on the left. Okay, so I do see... Although with the four and a half inch in the city, it's really not distinct. But we're, we're just testing to see if it's accurate. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we'll go to that one. Green. And remember, I got to be a little bit on the side. Oh, I do see a little fuzzy but Really? I don't even know if you're going to see this, babe. Little tiny, the tiniest glow. Where's the J cluster? Also called a coat hanger. Uh, this one should be easy. So we're going closer, closer. So it's telling you to, to bring it up. Yeah. Up, and the up. direction. And direction is backwards, so it's a little should be there now maybe it takes a second for it to go green okay see it turned yellow so it's like it pauses a bit so remember it's a little bit on the side I, I, I know I now know that the accuracy is a tiny bit off so if we look in you can look in yep I see it and we got the J cluster now I'm gonna show you babe so it's upside down so it's like this. It's upside down like this. You understand? Like this, like that. Take a look and see if you see it. And what I have to see? There's a J cluster. It looks like an upside down J. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See it? Four stars, no? Yeah. So, a four and a half inch in the city, I was able to see that star cluster before, but it was the tiniest of haze. I don't think a new person would see it. The coat hanger cluster is easy. I couldn't see the um, Lagoon Nebula. It's just too small of an aperture. Uh, but maybe the brighter stuff might be okay. But it is locating stuff. Really bright. Or the Hercules cluster. How about that? So Hercules cluster is here. There. So it's saying point, point, point. Point. Going, getting closer. Getting closer, 
So, you know what? For new people, do you see how I'm doing it? That might be the best thing for new people. Okay, so... I had to recalculate, so it wasn't... Yeah, green. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, here, I'll let you look. But it's so faint. You're going to say, that's the Hercules cluster? Okay. Oh, look. You take a look. Okay, I don't want to shine her, but do you see the Hercules cluster? It's like a something foggy, like a yeah, thing. little tiniest fog. In the top right. Yeah, somewhere there. Okay, so were you able to see the Hercules cluster at 103 power? Yeah, very tiny and foggy, but yeah. It very, very. Tiny. The one thing we're doing bad right now is we're using, a, if I don't use the flash, we won't be able to see Angelus, right? But right now if we're looking this is called the deep sky stuff we're not supposed to be using any type of white light at all because our eyes are not adapting does that make sense so that's not the greatest but at least you guys can see so so far it looks like the aiming is literally really fast for any new person you touch yeah. the screen and move it that's it yeah and it tells you the direction up down right left yeah okay Okay, everybody, so as we're now we're using my phone because, well, uh, Angelus was recording uh, with her phone and then my phone, obviously, because I have the app, I, it was on the telescope, but her battery is at down 2%. We just looked at five or six items. Now, a lot of the deep sky objects, like the lagoon, well, it's a little hazy today, but a four and a half inch is a bit small for deep sky stuff. They normally say when you want deep sky stuff, you need eight inches and above just so you guys understand that a four and a half inch would be good for the sun moon and planets a few double stars a few of the brighter clusters but you're still limited it's still a starter telescope so if you want to see the deep sky stuff you need at least an eight and I've done a video called what is the best size um, when you live in a big city like Toronto or any other big city you need to be minimum 8 to 12 inch now let's talk about this guy here now, you guys saw that I did a video uh, on the star sense and what I thought. Uh, basically, that was that the cost of, uh, it was mainly about Celestron has not done a Dobsonian in about 22 years. Now, they do have other uh, star sense, like this one's a, a reflecting telescope, but that one was mainly about the 8 and 10 inch Dobsonians. And I didn't give it a such a great review because I have used all kinds of Dobsonians and setting circles, go-tos, whatever. And I just thought their version is a lot more expensive and all it is is a cell phone ho holder and the app. So I kinda didn't give it the best review, but the technology, I am changing my mind and I am gonna give this, I think, a five star, the star sense. So for you guys out there, and there was a few people, and I'm gonna say, Eddie, thanks for, even though you gave me a lot of crap, uh, because you bought one and you used it and you said it was a game changer. I am also going to say it's a game changer now. And everything that I said on that video, I'm taking back. Now, I am not so proud that I don't mind retracting my statement. Um, a lot of people in, you know what I mean, they're so hard-headed. Even when they're given proof and shown proof, they won't change their mind because they think it makes you look dumb. I, on the other hand, want to be open-minded. I tried it, I just thought a cell phone holder and an app, okay, because we've had digital setting circles in the hobbies for years. And, but this is a game changer. It's so easy, it points you to, it changes color, it shows you the direction. I'm gonna say this is probably one of the best things that has come, that's come out in astronomy and telescopes in a very long time. This is gonna be a game changer in the hobby. A lot of people, what they're doing is buying the cheapest star sense uh, from Celestron, taking this cell phone holder, and it's not just a cell phone holder, it also has a mirror so it can reflect up. So if you guys are thinking just a cell phone holder with the app, you can't do it because you need this mirror one and you need the, it comes with a code when you buy the telescope. What you can do is take this off, sell it, and then put it on something bigger. I'm gonna do that with the 12 inch. And now I have something that you can see literally within minutes. Um, now your first time maybe to align it and get you know accustomed to it might take a, a, a little bit, but once you do that, this is 
I don't know, I would say amazing. As you saw me and Angeles, we looked at five, six things like that. So if you are brand new and the go-to procedure is just too hard for you, this is a, I'm gonna say, have you ever heard they say that there's books called Computers for Dummies or whatever? This is gonna be a computer or a software for dummies. You cannot go wrong. So I'm changing my mind. I think that StarSense is gonna be the new way that people are gonna be observing. There's only one caveat that it doesn't do, okay? This will help you find stuff literally in seconds, right? But it won't track, okay? So if you can get the star sense on an equatorial mount or with slow motion controls, that'll be a lot better. But on this kind, the AZ3 or, the, or anything Altazmuth with no slow motion, you're always moving it by hand and that's not so fun. And mind you too, this is also a Burge Jones design, so it's not the best quality. So as you saw with Angelus, he said, okay, I can see Saturn, but it wasn't so clear. It's because this type of telescope doesn't give you the best images. Anyway, guys, that's it. So if you guys want to try something new, try this guy out. If you're thinking of a go-to, this might be even easier than a go-to. It just won't track for you. So that's it. Joe Jaguar, I am changing my mind. This is the new standard. This is going to be the new way to find stuff, I think, for the new people and the older people uh, like myself. And I uh, give it a thumbs up. So there was three people that said this is going to be a game changer. And unless I actually try it. Um, so for you guys, thank you for complaining. I don't mind uh, changing my mind. I'm not that hard headed. A lot of people wouldn't even do a video of changing their mind. I don't mind. So again, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. And Joe Jaguar, why not you? Why not me?